So here's a video on relating hypothesis tests to confidence intervals. So we're going to take a look at the uh, example that we did before for the student grads and confidence intervals if you remember and hypothesis tests are built basically much from the uh, very similar very same calculations. They have the same assumptions and conditions because they're use this, using the same model. In this particular case the sampling distribution of proportions. You can approximate a hypothesis test by examining a confidence interval. Now it's not the exact same um, procedure, but you know, please you know, note the keyword here, you're approximating the hypothesis test. You're not running the exact same thing. You just have to ask yourself whether the null hypothesis value, the value that's currently being believed or currently being accepted, is consistent with a confidence interval for the parameter at the corresponding confidence level. And we'll see that what that means in just a minute. We'll build a confidence around the sample statistic and check if the population proportion is actually in that interval or not. So here's our data from before where 70% of college grads um, got a job in their field of study. And we had our sample size of N is 200. We had polled them and 132 of them got jobs in their field of study. So we had our sample proportion of 66.66% repeat. We had tested at the uh, significance level of 5% and the generally accepted level was 70% of grads got a job in their field of study. If we go back to our confidence interval calculations, our point estimate plus or minus the z-score or z-critical times the spread root p hat q hat over n. Now notice this is slightly different from the hypothesis test question because here we're dealing with p hat as an estimate of the population value. So plugging the numbers in our sample proportion 6 6 repeat plus or minus our z-critical 1 9 6 and here's our spread. Now remember that this portion here, this calculation here, the root p, q, p hat q hat over n, all square root, that is our standard error and it comes out to 0 0.0333 and I'm not showing the repeating decimals here. When we do the calculation z times the standard error, remember this is called our margin of error, and now we have the plus or minus, so we add it to our point estimate, subtract it from our point estimate, and we get our values 0.601 to 732. And this is where we can now use that interval to make a conclusion. And remember, our population proportion was 70% or 0.70. And we can see that 0.70 does fall within that interval. So because the confidence interval for the sample proportion, 66%, does indeed contain the claimed level of 70%, we can also say that at the 5% level of significance, there's not enough or insufficient evidence to refute or reject the director's claim, remember the director's claim was the null hypothesis, that 70% of the school seniors enter the job market in a field directly related to their field of study. So this is just an example of how we could use confidence intervals to actually come to the same conclusion as a hypothesis test for one proportion. Thanks.